Before I proceed to uh, Gaussian mixture models, I'd like to briefly go over the method of Lagrange multipliers for solving constraint optimization problems. Um, in the upcoming video, we will be optimizing Gaussian mixture models, uh, and this involves a constraint optimization step. Moreover, uh, later on in this course, we will again encounter constraint optimization problems, which we will solve by the method of Lagrange multipliers. Uh, so it's worthwhile to take a moment and go over this method. Now, the setting is that we're set out to find the maximum uh, location of this uh, function f. So f is the function that we're maximizing, but we're doing this subject to a constraint, which we're going to uh, denote as follows. Uh, and this is maybe abstractly put, but what you look at here, we say that my point x should lie on this level set, right? This g of x equals c represents a level set. So all the, all the, the values that are that takes some constant value that's actually denoted over here. Uh, but maybe let's make this a bit concrete. Um, so my g of x could be, for example, the function that takes the length of my vector x, and we want this to be equal to some number. So we're looking for points x uh, which have a particular length. This could be a constraint, right? So this g of x can be thought of as this function that spits out the length for each possible x. So this really is a function. and um, setting it equal to c uh, creates this level set of points uh, that indeed all have the same uh, length. All right, um, maybe we could make this a bit more uh, visual. So let's say, uh, so I'm now plotting my function g of x as some density, right? Uh, so that's how I'm going to uh, plot this. So give me a moment to draw this. Okay, so this, this gray region could represent my function, my constraint uh, function g of x. Um, so maybe darker means a, a higher value or a lower value. Uh, but the idea is that then when we fix some c, we select all points which have the same value, right? So that creates this level set. So this level set then defines the points of x, uh, the points x that satisfy uh, this constraint. So we want our solution to lie somewhere on this red uh, level set encoded via my well constraint g of x is c. Okay, so that's uh, the constraint, but then we're mainly interested in finding the maximum of this particular function uh, f of x. Uh, so let me also make a drawing uh, of this. Okay, so suppose this orange red region is the function that we want to maximize and it has its maximum over here at this point so darker means uh, higher values so actually my really my optimal location would be at this point uh, but now um, i am optimizing under this constraint so i actually only am allowed to pick points on this red curve okay and now the lagrange multiplier method uh, provides me a way of finding this point which really takes on the maximum value of this f of x, but still lies on this uh, constraint on this uh, level set. And the idea is as follows. Uh, first of all, we note uh, that this useful property that the gradient of g of x, the gradient of this function that defines my uh, constraint, is always perpendicular to, well, this constraint level set. That, that's really a property of level sets. So that's also nicely discussed in uh, the appendix E of the book of Bishop. Actually, this entire Lagrange multiply method uh, can be found also in, in that uh, chapter. Um, but what it says really is that if I take uh, the gradient of G, so this would be the gradient of G, um, it, it always is perpendicular to this uh, level set. So wherever I look on this level set, the gradient of G is perpendicular to it. Then another uh, important observation to make is that at this constraint maximum, the gradient of f, so the function that we want to maximize, uh, this gradient should also point uh, perpendicular to this uh, constraint surface. Uh, because if I, for example, consider this point, the gradient of f points in this direction, so this would be the gradient of f. And this actually means that I still have a component of this vector along this level set, right? Because we, if we want to optimize f, so now we're talking about optimizing, so this can be done via gradient ascent, so we walk uphill towards the maximum. So actually I want to move along this gradient, and now 
the problem is constrained so I cannot make the step directly in this gradient direction but I could only move along my uh, level set along my constraint and since uh, this gradient still has a component uh, in this direction so I could actually move in this direction and that would optimize my function f so as long as this gradient isn't uh, perpendicular to um, well the gradient of, of g I am still able to move into a direction uh, that uh, that optimizes f so suppose you do that then at this point the gradient again points in some direction which isn't fully perpendicular to my level set so it allows me to move a bit in this direction and at some point really when there's no improvement anymore to make then the gradient both of f and uh, the gradient of my um, constraint they are either parallel or anti-parallel okay so this tells us that at a constraint maximum the gradient of f should also be perpendicular to the constraint surface otherwise i would still have a component of this gradient uh, which isn't fully perpendicular to my level set and that would allow me to well update uh, my point x a little bit in the right direction um, but when they are both perpendicular uh, then well i cannot further improve my, my function values anymore Okay, so this means that at such an optimal location, uh, the gradient of f and the gradient of g are either parallel or anti-parallel. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they have to be the same, right? Uh, they can point in different directions and they can have different lengths. Uh, but it essentially means that there exists such a, a value lambda, such that the sum of these two uh, gradients equals zero. And this lambda value uh, will be called the Lagrange multiplier. So with that said, uh, we basically are saying that at such an optimal location x, we need to satisfy uh, this constraint uh, for some optimal value lambda, which we are not sure yet what this value is, but there exists such a lambda such that uh, this constraint is satisfied. And now it's going to be helpful to work with a so-called Lagrangian function. So this Lagrangian function is a function of x and lambda, um, which uh, basically is my function that I'm going to oh, multiply plus lambda times uh, well this is actually the constraint that we need to satisfy because then what you then see if we f look for uh, stationary points of this Lagrangian function so the points where the derivative with respect to x and with respect to lambda are both zero that's a stationary point so an optimal location an optimal setting for x and lambda we see that such a stationary point of my Lagrangian function uh, satisfies uh, my uh, original constraint, right? Because if this is satisfied, so let's say the derivative of x um, of this Lagrangian function, then this means I'm obtaining uh, this criterion, right? Uh, the derivative with respect to f gives me the gradient of f plus lambda times the gradient of g uh, of x. So that's really results in this uh, particular constraint. And if we find a solution for uh, the second thing, so the derivative to, uh, to lambda of my Lagrangian function, then this really implies that um, my constraint really, uh, the constraint is satisfied because the derivative of uh, my Lagrangian with respect to lambda will give me g of x minus c, which we set equal to zero. So that defines a stationary point and that gives me this equation. So we see uh, we can introduce a Lagrangian function and if we find an optimal location in this Lagrangian function with respect to x and lambda, we have solved our constraint uh, optimization problem. Okay, so it's probably helpful to take a look at some concrete example. Um, so the situation is as follows. So we're set out to maximize this function of two uh, variables, a function of x1 and x2, and it looks like this. And it's uh, graphically depicted over here with these blue um, contours. And then we have this constraint, uh, which is encoded as follows. So we have the constraint that x1 plus x2 minus 1 should equal to 0. So again, let's make this drawing. So f of x is the function that we want to optimize. And we see immediately for x1 and x2 equals 0, then this thing is uh, maximal, right? Because for every deviation from 0, this thing will get smaller. So um, this function is concentrated uh, around 0. Uh, so let me make again the same drawing with these uh, sort of density plots. 
Okay, so darker means a uh, higher value, right? So uh, this red orange colored plot represents my function that I want to optimize and really the optimal location is right at uh, the point x1, x2 is zero. Uh, but we're not allowed to select this point because we need to find points that lie on this uh, constraint uh, surface or this constraint level set. Um, and so this level set is obtained by taking a look at uh, g uh, of x1 and x2, right? So let me also make a plot of that. So this g of x is really a, a linear function, right? Which has a certain uh, direction. So along this direction, we have an increase of, uh, of g of x. So the, the gradient of, so this is the gradient of g always points in, in this uh, particular direction. And let's again take a look at um, this intuition of, of, of Lagrange multipliers. So the gradient of f points in this direction. So that actually means if I select this point, I could still improve my function values f by moving in this direction. I'm not fully allowed to move in this direction, but I'm still allowed to move along this, um, this level set. So basically the next optimal point uh, will be this thing. And if I look at this location, my gradient points somewhere in this direction. So I still have this component uh, on, along my level set, which allows me to move, move in this direction. But really at some point, uh, my gradient points in the same direction as the gradient of uh, my, my constraint function. And then there's no way that I can improve my function values uh, f anymore by, by moving along this line. So this, this is again a recap of uh, really this constraint, right? So we just again showed that at such an optimal location, the gradient of x uh, is aligned with the gradient of, of, of g with some multiplier lambda because delta g and delta f are not necessarily the same. So they can have different lengths and different uh, signs, but at least their directions are the same. So there exists such a lambda for which uh, these two gradients uh, are the same. So that was the principle of this uh, method of Lagrange multiplier. So um, we define then this Lagrangian function because then if we compute the stationary points of this function, we actually found our solution. So this is the Lagrange function that we're now going to define where this thing over here is my function f of x1 and x2. And this thing over here is lambda times g of x minus c, but c is uh, zero in this example, right? So this is then uh, my Lagrangian uh, function. And then we're going to look for the optimizers uh, of this function. So we take the derivative with respect to x1, x2, and lambda, set it to zero, and then solve this system of equations for x1, x2, and lambda. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, the derivative uh, with respect to x1, we see an x1 over here, so that gives me minus two x1. We see an x1 over here, the derivative will give me plus lambda. So this directly tells me that x1 is going to be um, lambda over two. Uh, the same here in the x2 case, we find this uh, uh, equation. If we solve it, we get x2 is also lambda over 2. And if we take the derivative with respect to lambda, so that gives me this constraint uh, function really, um, we can now fill in the x1 and x2 that we just uh, derived. And that tells me that lambda equals 1. Okay, so this tells me that the optimizer of this constraint optimization problem is given by the following. So x1 takes on the value a half, x2 takes on the value a half. And this lambda was used as, as an aid in deriving this solution essentially. Okay, so that describes the method of Lagrange multiplies for uh, solving constraint optimization problems. So the recipe is uh, define the function that you want to, to optimize and also write your constraint in the following form. As a function g of x equals uh, some c and then with this, you can define such a Lagrangian function. So f of x plus lambda times g of x minus c. And once you have defined such a Lagrangian function, then only thing that is left is look for uh, the stationary points. So set the derivative of x to zero, set the derivative of lambda to zero, solve it, and that will give you your constraint uh, solution.